If you want a really easy way to distress your furniture, I recommend that you purchase the Beeswax Distressing Block. This is an amazing tool for getting exact placement for where you want the distressing to occur. And it means that afterwards when you're doing some sanding, you save a lot of elbow grease. All right, here we've got our piece that has been originally, you know, just a, a plain piece of pine and we applied a coat of the chocolate on there. This is a little trick that I like to use when I am painting over a piece that is a different color that I don't want to see coming through. So I want to make it look like an old wood. I paint chocolate on first and then I'm going to take my distressing beeswax block and you're simply just pressing it along the edges, typically where you would have uh, some wear and tear. So you want to go maybe a little heavier in the edges. You may see a little bit of the wax. That's okay. If you get too much there, you can just sort of wipe it off. And you want to get into these grooves so that when you put your next coat of paint over top of it, it may look as though it's adhering to it and as it's drying. But when you go afterwards and you take your little bit of sandpaper, all of the paint that you apply to the areas that have this wax come off with virtually no pressure whatsoever and it makes your distressing so much easier. And this is great for exact placement of distressing. So anywhere that I put this beeswax block, which is also known as a resist technique, that means that the paint literally will be resisted off and it won't adhere. So again, a really great tool. You don't have to just apply it in these areas. Some like to apply it on larger areas. So if you want a heavier distressing look, you can simply do this. So now that I have applied my beeswax block to the areas where I want to see some distressing afterwards, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my paint. So I'm going to be using the lamp white color, which is a really nice uh, off white with a gray undertone to it. It has really excellent coverage. I really enjoy using this one. And I'm just going to be very generous with the paint, get it into all the grooves. I'm painting over all the little wax that we just put on there. And anywhere the wax is, afterwards, once this is dry, say in about 30 minutes or so, you wanna come by with a sandpaper and lightly remove and distress the paint. So once this is dry, we will come back and show you that next step. We just finished applying our one coat of lamp white on here. And now it's time for the fun part of the distressing where you get to see where you placed all of that beeswax distressing block on the edges. As soon as we start to take our sandpaper and apply it, you need almost no pressure at all and it just comes off so nicely. Especially getting into some of the grooves here. Just push it down, get a little more force on there. I'm using a 500 grit fine, fine sandpaper. I don't know if you can see right in there, all of that coming off really nicely. Let's do some of these edges. There we go. What I like about using the distressing block is that I can exactly place where I want my distressing to occur and I don't need to use a lot of elbow grease to be able to remove the paint because fusion mineral paint is so strong and so incredibly durable that it can be a little bit difficult to distress if you let it sit for too long. Now, I always like to keep a damp rag close by because I like to clean up what I have just distressed, especially when I've got um, a dark color and a light color, because sometimes the colors blend together and they muddy together and you don't actually realize how much you're distressing until you've gone too far and done too much. So you kind of give it a nice little cleanup and just do a little bit more on some of the edges here. And I'm gonna do a little bit heavier of a distress on the flat areas as well, just cause I wanna see some of that pattern come through of the wood grain. When you have real wood, it's really nice to, to show it off. And again, when you're doing the flat areas, that's when you're really gonna to start to muddy the colors together. 
So you just want to give it a nice little wipe down, make sure any excess dust, as you can see right there, all that white that's on that cloth there, that's paint that's just sitting on your piece. So you want to remove that so you can really see where you've done all of your distressing. I'm going to keep going here and then we'll get some nice tight close-up shots afterwards. There we go. I tend to just kind of drag this across and any of the areas that are highlighted, it just picks up on all of that right there. Really easy, you don't have to specifically say, oh, I wanna get just this here. You can kind of just drag it right across and it'll grab it all for you. And wipe that down. There we go. Probably get into some of these areas too. Just use your fingers, turn the, the distressing pad there. And these are great. You could actually wet these as well, but this is raw wood that we painted. So you don't need to wet distress. Wet distressing is better on, on um, pieces that were previously painted with a couple different layers, maybe had a really shiny finish that you're coating. And there we have it. And that's how you can get a beautiful distressing finish by using the beeswax block with a little bit of sanding. Now that we have finished our distressing, I want to age it up a little bit more. So I'm going to be using our aging wax and it's a really nice sort of mid sort of gray, black, brown color. And I'm gonna use a little bit on a brush. These brushes are amazing wax brushes. They're Stallmeister, really, really lovely. And we're just going to put a little bit on the brush. Now by a little bit, this is probably too much. If you can see the wax on your brush, you've probably got too much on there. So I'm going to just wipe some of that right back off into the container. This little container can do quite a lot. And to wax, because this has a lot of different grooves in it, and this is a round brush, it's perfect because you can actually get right in there. So I'm going to swirl, and it looks like you're getting quite a lot in there, right? Swirl. Get it right in, nice and deep into the crevices. And then I'm going to come after and remove the excess and buff. There we go. I'll do the edges as well. Don't, don't forget, you see everything on your pieces of furniture, the sides. And nice and easy. It's so quick to wax little detailed pieces like this. Then you take a, a lint-free cloth and just sort of buff off the excess there. You don't want to leave a lot of wax sitting behind. And you can get into some of the, the details. And what this does is it really just helps to accent and give a little bit more depth and richness to your piece. And there we have it, adding a little bit of aging wax just to give it a little bit something extra.